This is the Aune Aune S9C Pro. It's a big old DAC with a linear power supply and a headphone amp inside that puts out five watts of power. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's see if the Aune S9C Pro is as good as the Gishelli Labs AKM 4499J2. The Aune, Un, I don't know how to say it. A lot of people get upset because I don't pronounce things the way that they want them to be pronounced. Like Jamo and Clips and Weem, which apparently is Wim? I don't know. The Aun, I'll just call it that. S9C Pro Bluetooth Reference DAC Headphone Amplifier. I guess there's two different versions. And from what I can tell, the only difference is one comes with a Bluetooth antenna and one doesn't. Anyway, you can get this thing for $700, $699 on Amazon. On their website, they have it in euros. Four different options on Amazon. Black, silver, and then black and silver with a Bluetooth antenna. Let's just read off the internet. High res up to 768, blah, 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 32-bit, DSD 512, says MQA. Although I could not get MQA to work on this one when I was running Rune. Two DAC chips, parallel and synchronous. Those DAC chips are Sabre ES9068 DAC chips, but they have a bunch of other technology, or so they say. Anyway, this thing, if you want to check it out, go click on the link and look at it. It's got a bunch of clocking stuff going on. Clocking with the USB and clocking with all the other outputs, inputs, sorry. Has a very heavy... Large, well, I didn't look at it, large linear power supply, a toroid of sorts. But this is heavy enough that um, I do not want to drop this on my toe or any other piece of my body. It's also got a curvy curvy on the top. Yep, and then a uh, screen right in the middle. Screen's pretty simple, but nice, tastefully done. Not any weird fonts going on on the screen. On the front, you have balanced headphone output. And you have a 6.35 millimeter single ended output and then another 4.4 pentacon gram output for your headphones. A massive five watt headphone amplifier in here if you're running it off of the XLR or the pentacon output. Also has support for an external clock. Two different filter modes, which I appreciate that there's only two different filter modes and I could hear a difference. 1080 components in total. I kind of like that. Let you know how many parts are in there. It's got LDAC, Bluetooth, all the good Bluetooth stuff, and a 50 watt low ripple toroidal transformer, plus 23,900 microfarads capacitor array. Enjoy the richness. You know, I joke, but this thing is heavy. It's got a big toroid, and you would think it would be more complicated than a heavy piece of hi-fi equipment, sounding better than a lighter piece of hi-fi equipment. But in many cases, it's not that complicated. Generally, if you have a really good power supply, if it's a heavier unit, as long as it's not filled with plaster or concrete to give you the false sense that it's a heavy component, Heavy component almost always sounds better. Strange, I know. Let me give you these headphone amp numbers. So single-ended, you get uh, basically a, a watt and a half or 1,460 milliwatts in the 32 ohms. Balanced 5,500 milliwatts, that's five and a half watts. 300 ohms, you get 672 milliwatts. 600 ohms, 336 milliwatts. Bunch of info on their website about the clock and all the good stuff. What's on the back? On the back, you have balanced XLR outputs and then an RCA single-ended output. You have an AES input. That's right, for all you fancy people. An optical input, one single coaxial input. A little clock thing connection right there. Full-size USB input. And then the Bluetooth antenna goes right here. And you have your master power switch and then uh, right here you have the IEC connector actually I couldn't figure out a way to turn this thing off or put it into any standby mode on the front because the controls are super simple which I love there's no complicated menus inside this 
check out this remote control. Look at it. It's really cool. It's very sleek. It's very nice. Although, I thought I needed to put a battery in it. Luckily for me, there is already a battery inside it because it takes a very small Allen key to actually open this thing up. But it's very cool. In a pinch, you could swallow this if somebody really wanted it from you and you didn't want to give it. It may not be easy, but you could probably swallow this. So these three on top change the input. They change the mode from mode one to mode two, which is the filter roll-offs. And then it changes whether or not it's a headphone amplifier or line out, which is really cool. That's it. Simple. And then you have volume up and volume down. I love it. A lot of the SMSL, a lot of these other decks, you have to dive deep into menus and they give you so many different options which tells me that whoever designed the Aune S9C did not copy and paste a design from a previous design or anything like that. It's original. Bunch of hookup options on the back. More hookup options than, I don't know, Brad Pitt's Tinder profile if he was single. We've established that it's heavy. We've established it uses good parts or they claim to use good parts. We've established that it's simple to use. Let's talk about how it sounds compared to my reference DAC, the Gishelli Labs J2 AKM 4499 version with a Sparkos op amp upgrade. I had two weems linked together. I made a joke, but it wasn't appropriate. Two weems linked together playing at the same time. I had one weem going into the Aune. 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 The other one was going into the Gishelli Labs J2, AKA M4499 with a Sparko Swap Amps upgrade. Both of those were going into the PT2 from Emotiva. It's a very nice preamp from Emotiva. Both running single-ended because the PT2 does not have balanced inputs. Then I had that going out of the PT2 going into the A1 monoblock. So I had a bunch of power on these things. Good preamp, great amps running into the Emotiva B2 Plus bookshelf speaker, which incidentally may still be available. It's all Emotiva all the time over here. But seriously, it's my reference system here in the office. Was a bit of a level disparity, even on the single-ended output on both DACs. The Gishelli Labs J2 was coming in at a higher level, so I did have to turn down the volume on the J2 when I switched to it. Not a perfect way to compare DACs. I could have changed the digital output on the Weems, but I didn't want to because I didn't want to affect resolution. Not a great way to compare things, but the J2 was not a walkaway winner in this comparison. I listened to Chris Cornell, Patience, the cover of GNR's Patience. I listened to Whole Lot of Love by Led Zeppelin. Also listened to Rob Zombie, some ACDC, and some Mumford and Sons. What I can tell you is there was a bit more space and air with the J2, but that's with the Sparkos op amps upgrade. The sound stage and imaging was actually very big, very wide, very spacious for a DAC, and maybe 15% less than the J2. Percussion, Snare hits were a little bit more prominent with the S9C Pro from Ayune when compared to the Gishelli Labs J2. I thought vocal clarity was actually a little bit better on the Ayune and a little bit more of a forward presentation than the J2. Which one is better? Well, that depends on you. It depends on what you want. They're both extremely incredible DACs. Frankly, I was a little surprised because not only is the S9C Pro a DAC, but it's a very capable headphone amplifier. I was listening to the Hi-Fi Men Edition XS last night in my headphone nuke. It's a little area in my living room that I like to put headphones on late at night and listen to music. Probably the most music I listen to is in that little nook. Anyway, I have recently had a whole bunch of equipment in there, including the Fio R7, which is an all-in-one headphone amplifier DAC with a streamer. This is a THX amplifier in the Fio, and man, is it not nearly as good as the Une. A Une, Une, Une is more natural sounding by a fair amount, much more dynamic than the THX. 
less clinical, less sterilized than the THX. Very natural sounding headphone amplifier. Sounded great, sounded organic, sounded like music should sound. So, what are my final thoughts? Coffee's really good this morning. Folgers, Silk, actually fairly affordable, reasonably priced coffee. And it's not terrible at all. You'd think Folgers wouldn't be good, but Silk, it's quite yummy. Regular Folgers, not anymore, I can't. I've become a, a bit of a Folgers coffee snob. Anyway, you're not into that. By the way, I'm drinking out of my old Automation X cup. Automation X was a competitor of mine when I worked in the oil field, oil and gas industries. And I love the quote they have on here. To hell with circumstances, I create opportunities. Bruce Lee, I like that. You're not here to hear little funny little stories about me and my preferred Folgers flavor. You're here to find out about this deck. This deck, very impressed with this deck. $700 sounds like a lot. However, you have to consider that the Shelly Labs J2 fully kitted out the way I have it. Pretty expensive, nearly the same price, and there's no headphone amp attached to it. I am not saying that I prefer the Ayune over the J2. For my listening, I don't like a really forward mid-range presentation. And this doesn't have a really, really forward mid-range, so please don't take this as... The Ayune S9C Pro has a really forward mid-range presentation. It doesn't. It just has a more forward mid-range presentation than the J2. J2 is a little bit airier, but that's with the Sparkos op amps. With the stock TI op amps, I think these two would sound very similar to one another. I am so glad that there is a DAC that has different stuff an original, even an original remote control design tells me that they don't want to be like everybody else. With their emphasis on clocking issues, they're also approaching the digital music reproduction in a bit of a different way. I have no idea how this thing measures or if it's been tested at all. But what I can say is this screw right here holds down a big old toroid and color me nostalgic, but I like toroidal transformers. I also had the J2 hooked up to a linear power supply too. So that's another 200 bucks or so. So if you add that on top of the J2's price, you're really coming in about the same price or a little bit above. So what you're getting with the Ayune, Headphone amp, very powerful, very good sounding headphone amp, if not great sounding. Really cool little remote control. Bunch of different connection options. It's upside down. All in a well-built, very nice looking package. However, you're probably not gonna put anything on top of this because it is not, well, I, that kind of worked. It's not flat though. You can see there's a bit of a, a curve to this. I guess if you had something with feet on it, you could probably put it on top of this. Really impressed. And I think $700 is a very fair price. Highly recommended. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap audio man. Every Sunday night, we have patron only Zooms, patron only Discord, patron only Facebook group. You can also use the links in the description. Those are affiliate links, which means if you click and you buy, I get a commission. Doesn't cost you any more though, so it's a great way to support the channel. You can also buy me a cup of coffee. Down at the bottom of the video, there's a thanks button. Click on it. Throw me a couple of bucks, but don't feel compelled to buy me anything. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen, maybe through your Ayune S9C Pro reference DAC headphone amplifier and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the cheap audio man.